Have you ever taken communion at a church and they brought you something that looked like this? What exactly is that anyway? Whatever it is, it's not bread. And if you've been to a church that gives you bread for communion, chances are that they've given you unleavened bread. And there's a reason for this, because when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, it was during the time of Passover, and during the Passover, Jews ate unleavened bread. So it stands to reason to many churches that you should be celebrating Lord's Supper with unleavened bread. But if you come to Providence, we give you a good hunk of homemade leavened bread for communion. There are actually three good reasons for why we do this. The first reason that we use leavened bread is that at the time of the Passover, Jewish households were to cleanse the entire house of leaven, throw out all the yeast in the house and eat only unleavened bread during the feast of the Passover. But then after the Passover, you would start a new yeast starter. You would have new leaven in the house. And 50 days later at the Feast of Weeks, which is also called the Feast of Pentecost, you would celebrate with the new leavened bread. You see, the purging of the old leaven symbolizes the purging away of sin, the removal of sin from the household, and the new leaven represents the leaven of righteousness that then fills you up. And Paul tells the Corinthians, in fact, that they're to purge themselves of their old leaven. You're, you're to purge yourself of the leaven of sin so that you can be filled up with the leaven of righteousness. So when the Holy Spirit came upon the believers at Pentecost and they were empowered by the Holy Spirit to go out and proclaim the gospel to all nations, uh, that was the feast of leavened bread. It was the feast uh, celebrating the new leaven. And the church is the new leaven. That brings us to the second reason to celebrate communion with leavened bread. And that's that Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman placed in a lump of bread. And the leaven rose and filled the lump and the bread grew. Um, in the same way, we're promised that the kingdom of heaven is going to fill the earth and grow. We are the leaven. We are the leaven that grows and fills the earth. The gospel is going to go forth. The world's going to be converted. And so it's appropriate that leavened bread be the symbol of this. That we eat leavened bread at communion to symbolize the growth of the gospel spreading throughout the world. And the third reason has to do with the Old Testament offerings. So most of the offerings that involved grain or bread asked for unleavened bread, again, representing the purging of sin away. But the peace offering that we read about in Leviticus chapter 7 specifically calls for leavened cakes. And the peace offering is unique in that it's the only offering in which the person sacrificing, the, the worshiper, gets to participate in the feast with the priests before God. So in the worship or in the, in the praise offering or the thanksgiving offering, the worshiper after the sacrifice would sit and eat of the sacrificial meat with the priest. And at that priest, at that uh, peace offering, leavened bread was used. Now, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, in church, it, it's not an ascension offering going on. Jesus is our one offering for sin. Our sins have been cleansed. Our sins have been forgiven. We, we remember that earlier in the service when we repent and we pray and we receive the assurance of pardon. We know that Jesus died once for all our sins. He was our eternal offering. So what's going on at communion is we're sitting down in peace at the Lord's table celebrating our peace with God and our peace with man that was purchased for us by Jesus. And as a, a picture of the peace offering, it's fitting that we use the leavened bread to say that we're being filled with Christ's righteousness. The old leaven is gone. The new leaven has come. Celebrate in peace with Christ.